Hey everyone, Steve from Fast Product Photography Services here. After you finish this video, if you need any product photos taken for your Amazon products, or really anything e-commerce, come visit us at Fast Product Photography using the link in the description. Thanks. All right, everyone. So today we're going to learn how to make a very simple infographic. Obviously, infographics can range uh, basically you know, as as wide as your imagination wants them to be. It could be really, really simple. It could be extremely complex and artistic um, and, and very decadent and detailed. Or it could just be kind of in the middle, something like this, where you've got um, something that's obviously more descriptive than your average picture. You can put in some basic descriptions of the highlights. And it's always nice to at least um, make uh, a little bit of a zoom effect on certain highlights in, in certain areas. And for this one, we just did the ergonomic grip because it's not easily visible on the uh, straight on picture. So we just wanted to get one that's from the side a little bit. And it's really easy to do. And all that it really takes, your, your starting point, is just the straight on picture of the calculator in this case, and then the side picture of the calculator in this case. So Here's the first thing that we want to make sure that we do. Um, you want to make sure that the image is relatively clean. And, and if you have to go in there with the spot healing or clone stamp or whatever the case may be, you know, you, you want to go in there and make sure it's at least as clean as possible. That wasn't a good one. But um, if you if you go ahead and make an infographic on a, a dusty picture. No one's going to appreciate that. And ultimately, it's probably going to end up hurting your chances. So this one could probably use some more touching up. But just for the sake of the video, I wanted to run that by everyone and just make sure that we weren't, uh, you know, just going through and, and creating sloppy pictures of our of our projects. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off by moving this one around. If we're going to replicate this infographic, you can see that it's not uh, exactly in the, the right spot so far, but uh, this is a, a easy infographic to make. This is something that you could essentially create this template and copy it and alter it a little bit. And I'm not going to do it exactly the same as this. I'll change some colors around uh, just because why not? Um, so let's start by hitting V on the keyboard, and that'll allow us to move this around. And if you haven't already selected your or uh, cleared the, the the rest of your image let's just go up to the magic wand tool click on that and let's select the outer section there and we can just hit delete now in this case it's not going to do anything because i already have uh, i already have it cut out and i already have a white background on there um, so now i'm gonna hit Control d to deselect and you know what why don't we just go ahead and actually just do that quickly. I'm just going to merge them. So now you see it's just one large image. So now let's go to the magic wand tool. Let's click anywhere in the white and make sure that the external portion is selected. Otherwise, you'll end up deleting your calculator. Just hit delete. And there you go. Now you've got a the product just on a, a transparent background. Hit control D. And now you've deselected it. Hit V. And you can move your product wherever you want. And it looks like because of what I just did, it um, left some edges. So what we want to do now, it looks like compared to this one, the calculator is just a little bit large. Um, so I'm going to hit V again. And then I'm going to click on the calculator just to make sure that the layer is selected. Hit Control T. And now you can resize your product however you want. And I'm just going to go right about there. That looks good. Hit the check mark. And now it's resized. And as long as you're still selecting the pointer tool, you can uh, relocate it. I'm going to make sure that it's in the center of the image, but off to the left. So now, if we're replicating this, let's start by putting the image inside of the circle like this. And then let's build around it. Um, so what we want to do first is we want to go over to the shapes tool right now. It's selected on line tool. So right click, go into the ellipse, left click on that. 
And let's go over to a similar area here. And let's just go ahead and start making it about as large as we want. Hit Shift and Hold Shift to make sure it's a perfect circle. And release. Now, the fill in this case uh, doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, it's, it's kind of however you want it to be, I suppose. Because we're going to end up putting the profile picture of the ergonomic grip within this circle. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So uh, let's, let's just change the outside border. I'm going to make it gray in this instance. Let's go with gray. Okay, and it's six is going to be just a little bit small. Let's make it 10. Okay, and I actually also, just judging on this photo, it looks like you have got your border there. So we're just going to leave it as is. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And just hit enter. And there you go. You've got yourself your initial circle, which is actually the external layer there. And you can kind of see how that's going to work. And then we're going to do the next layer inside of it. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to copy this. Let's go ahead. Uh, sorry. Right click on the layer of the circle. And go up to where it says duplicate layer. And it's going to automatically go into the calc document, which is the one that we're currently in. Just ellipse one copy is fine. We'll just leave it as that. Now, you're still selected. And what we want to do is we want to just resize it a little bit. Make sure you hold shift again. And we want to get it to about there, right? Hit enter. Now hit V. And let's just line it up right in the middle of the other circle. Okay. So now in order to adjust the edges, because it looks like we want it to be this sort of dashed border, let's go and make sure we're selected on that same ellipse one copy. Go ahead and hit the shape tool again. Now we're able to edit the shape within, you know, basically the borders and all of the above. So let's go up to here where it's a solid line and let's bring it over to be the dashed line. Okay, so it looks pretty good so far, but when you look at it closely, you can see how it's not perfect up there, and that's because of the, uh, the border sizing. So that's not going to work for us. We want to make sure that that is, you know, basically looking good all the way around. And I think, let's just see, that one looks good, but I want it to be a little thicker than that. That looks pretty good right there. I think I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as that. And... Uh, let's change the color to orange, which I believe is the color that we had over there. And you can see how it's starting to kind of come together. And it's starting to look similar to the way that it was over there. Where you can see the orange dashes. And there's your orange dashes there. This one, we can change the, the border to match there to be gray. I'll, I'll show you how that is in just a second. But we, you can see how we're starting to really come along here. Now what we want to do to put the picture inside of that ellipse, we go over to the profile calculator. Let's go ahead and right click on this layer. Let's hit duplicate layer. And now we want to make sure that we bring it over to the calculator layer. So currently it's selected on profile calc, which is this current image. Let's go down, drop it over, hit Calc, hit OK. And now, if we go back over to the Calc one, we've got this image in this, uh, you know, basically set. So let's hit V. Now we can move this around. And ultimately, this is going to end up inside of that image. So I'm going to just kind of bring it over roughly where I want it to be. And a little trick that'll help us out in the long run let's just make sure that we're still on this let's go to where it says opacity drop that down and let's just make it 50 percent roughly okay so now within that background circle you can see how that's going to end up looking 
So if you had to resize it, let's hit Control T. You can make it a little bit larger, a little bit smaller, and I think it looks good like that. Okay, hit check. And now let's go back into the opacity. Let's bring it back to where it needs to be, 100%. Now, make sure that that is over that internal or that uh, the, the upper circle. In this case, because we're doing layered circles, it makes it a little bit more complicated. But let's go right click on that profile calculator view. And let's hit create clipping mask. And look at that. Now it automatically is clipped inside of that dashed circle. So it's looking really good. The, the only difference is that that uh, outside, as you can see, it's not gray in the same way that this is, and it doesn't have that orange border. So let's go and let's, let's change that right now. So that's going to be ellipse one. Remember, go back and, and uh, click on the shapes, and then you can change it. So let's change the fill to, whoops, sorry. Making mistakes. Let's change it to a light gray. There you go. And then you've got your black border, which I actually think looks pretty good. Let's leave it like that. That's, that's one of the things that'll be a little bit different for this one. Hit enter. And, oh, no, it stayed dark gray. So it looks good. And it's a little bit different, but I like where we're going with it. So now you've got your circle image with the dashed border, and that's the hardest part of this. Okay, so even if there's one takeaway from this video, that would probably be the most important one because you could do this in, you know, numerous shapes, numerous sizes, numerous different configurations, all of the above, and then you just have to do the text and the lines around it. So uh, we're looking pretty darn good, I'd say. So let's go up to um, let's go uh, to layer one. Let's click on for now because we're ultimately going to want these lines to be underneath this shape. So we want to make sure it's lower than them on the layer and we want to make sure that it's over the calculator. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go back over to the shapes, right click on it, hit the line tool. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to make the stroke of this one color blue. Okay, and we're going to want it to be roughly 10 pixels. I'm just going to guess. So now let's go and if we zoom out just a little bit, let's make sure we've got the right border. So the first thing that we're going to do, we want to do the 10 digit LCD display. So we need to make a line that goes over to right above the center of the LCD display. And the thing about this is that we want to make sure that these lines are all symmetrical. We want to make sure that we have 90 degree angles. We don't want to go and have weird angles and all of the above. Typically, it just ends up looking sloppy. So one thing that we really should do is we should create a center line, um, just a guide, basically. So let's go over to the calculator one. And the first thing that we want to do is go over to the side where you can pull the guide from. Just click and hold, and you can see we're creating a guide now. So it's going to bring us right to roughly the center. Just get it right over the numbers like that. That's kind of how you can tell. And now we have a guide that we can build to. So if we're starting from here, let's say, just drag it, hold shift to make sure that it's a straight line. And it's going to bring us to exactly the center there. Hit enter. Let's see how it looks. I think that looks pretty good. You know, that's good thickness. It's not too big. It's not too small. And now let's go ahead and let's do another line right along the border. And this is the main part. You see how it kind of just clicks us right into place there. And hit enter. And there's our first line. The thing with this, though, which you really want to make sure you do is you want to zoom in on the edges, hit V, and just make sure that it's lined up perfectly. We don't want to have any you know, little pixelated edges. We want things to be crisp. We want things to be looking good. So there's your first line. 
And if you wanted to, you could go over to where the line is. You could uh, hit Control. And now we have both lines selected. See that? And let's hit Merge Shapes. So now it's just one thing. We can get rid of it. We can move it together. We can do all of those things together if we so choose. Now, let's zoom in on the middle here because you can see that we've got this little ellipse with the black center. So let's replicate that. Go over to the Shape tool, right click, Ellipse tool. Go uh, vaguely over that. Let's hit Shift to make sure that it's a perfect circle. And let's line it up in the center there. There you go, that's looking good. Let's make the fill black. And we obviously want the stroke to match that same blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as is. Let's hit Enter. And there you go, that looks pretty good so far. Pretty darn good. Um, so, now let's go and let's make the next shape, which is going to be the ergonomic grip. And we're just going to do the exact same thing. Let's make a line. 10 pixels. Let's change the color to be red this time. Looks good. Now, one thing that I do want to make sure I do, I don't want there to be different points that these go to on the, the right-hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another guide that goes right to the edge of that. So now we're going to be perfect all the way down along the bottom. Now, it looks like what we did here was the ergonomic grip, uh, just a little bit below the circle. So let's go ahead and do, let's replicate that. Okay, hit Shift, make sure that it's perfect. There you go, Enter, zoom in, and let's make another guide, just to make sure we end up right at the center. Hit Shift, and it'll bring us to the center there. Enter, same thing, make sure that were perfectly on the edges. And let's just keep this going. There you go. Enter. Zoom in, hit V. Make it perfect. There you go. And now one thing that is worth noting, we don't want to have different colored or different uh, sized circles. We want them to be all of the same. So let's just zoom in on this. Obviously I messed up. So I'm going to hit V, click on that, go over to the shapes. We don't want it to be red. We want that edge to be blue. I'm sorry. I got sloppy there and I messed up. So now we've got the ellipse selected. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's the same thing. So we're going to duplicate this layer and just hit OK. Let's go ahead and hit V. And we're going to bring it right over to where this one is. Beautiful. So we've got our line five and line three there. We want to make sure that it's over top these ones. So that should be good. And we want to go and again, adjust this color, make sure that it matches the red. Hit enter, and there you go. See how we're starting to come together here? So what's the last thing that we've got here? Scientific functions. Let's do a green one down here, I'm thinking. And where was this roughly? Uh, towards the bottom. So let's go ahead, and we're starting to get a lot of different lines and a lot of different things going here. So let's make another line from there, and. You don't want it to be too far towards the bottom, too far towards the top. So let's make another guide. Why not? I'm thinking right there is going to be good. Just drag it from there to there. Let's change this color to what do we say green. There you go. 10 pixels.
What am I doing wrong here? There we go. All right, so let's keep this going here and let's just bring it up. It looks like we wanted to be towards the actual scientific function section. So let's zoom out just a little bit, drag it right along the border, bring it up to there and hit enter, zoom in, hit V. And I know that this is somewhat monotonous, but it's important that we get it right. So Click on the old circle, duplicate layer, hit OK, and then let's drag it over to here. And again, we want to make sure that this is above our current selection. So there you go. Go ahead and change the color to green to match. Hit Enter. And now we are in really good shape. We're, we're starting to really come together. Let's go up to View. Hit clear guides because we're just going to get rid of all that. We're going to make new guides and we want to make sure that everything is, you know, for the most part, uh, right along the edges once we do the text. So we're going to do that. It's just slightly above, slightly above, and lastly, slightly above. And we also want to make sure that it all starts in roughly the same place. So we're going to go ahead and go right there. So that'll be the starting point for each one of our different texts. See how it's all lined up in roughly the same spot. So we're going to do 10 digit LCD display first. Let's go ahead and hit the text. Make sure that it's on horizontal type tool. You can click right here and it should line it up for you. So 10 digit. And you can already see how it's in white, which we don't want. We want this to be in black. And it's going to be too large like that. Let's bring it down to uh, 16 is too small. 24 might be good. LCD display. And it's still a little bit too big for how much I did the lines. I'm actually going to go custom. Do 20. 22 is going to be our number. Let's change from Arial to what's going to be a good one. Sure, let's do Franklin Gothic. Why not? And you can't hit enter here. You want to go and click on your text layer. So there you go. And now what we can do, rather than starting a new one for each one of these, let's just go ahead and let's right click on that layer, duplicate, hit OK. And let's go up here, hit V, and let's drag this one down. All right, and let's just get it right along the same lines. Go ahead over to your text section, double click on the text icon, and now it's uh, something we can select. Let's select 10 digit LCD display, retype it as ergonomic grip. Don't hit enter because it'll bring you down. We just want to go ahead and click on the section and we're starting to look really good. And it looks like I actually don't want to go down below this line for the lower parts. So let's grab this and let's just move it up like that. Perfect. And same thing, right click, duplicate layer, hit OK. Let's drag this down, make sure it's perfectly along that line, right above that line, double click on the text icon, and let's read type scientific functions. Click on the selection and we're starting to look really good. You can see how this is really starting to come together. So let's see, upgraded display required for scientific function or calculations. All right, same thing, let's go over here. And we're actually going to create 
or what we can do now is we can actually just move these guides down, which will make it nice and easy for us. I like that a lot. Perfect. All right. And rather than going through all of that, let's just go and let's just stick with these ones. So let's do the same thing. Duplicate layer. Okay. And it's, uh, we're down at this one, I believe. And let's just drag this down to right there. And I don't think that's quite perfect. There we go. All right, now this is going to be too large as is. So let's double click. Let's bring this down to 16. Sure. And advanced functioning for high level calculations and formulas. Now it's important to note that I was just hitting enter as we got to the edge here and um, you know just manually making this to fit underneath the current selection. So let's just leave that as is. I think that looks fine. It's not exactly the same as this, but you know, roughly the same. And I don't know if there was any different display. Nope. So let's right click again, duplicate layer, hit OK. Let's take that, let's drag that up. Same thing, looking good. Double click on the T. And what do we want to do now? Ergonomic grip, dual ergonomic grip for comfortable and non-slip calculations. Dual ergonomic grip for comfortable and non-slip calculations. Click over here and last but not least, upgrade display required for scientific calculations. Duplicate layer. Hit OK. Grab it and drag it up. Perfect. Upgraded display required for advanced calculations. Beautiful. So let's zoom out. And you can see this is really starting to come together. I think that we're just about there. So let's hit view and let's clear all these guides. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom. Click on layer one. Let's go to this uh, moon cookie looking icon, left click on that, go up to solid color. And there you can see, let's make sure that this color is white, unless you wanted it to be something different. But in this case, I want it to be perfect white. So let's make our background, let's drag that below the calculator. And that's basically it. You can see how this is. It's not the same text. The colors aren't exactly the same. But, you know, in, in essence, this is roughly the same thing. I, I think that um, you can mess around with the different, you know, text sizes and all of the above to really highlight things. And, you know, I probably ended up going a little bit small on the text in these cases. But uh, the most important things is that you have the different templates and all of the above and how you can move things around and different shapes. And through this video, we covered a lot. We covered different layers. We covered uh, creating clipping masks to put images inside of shapes. We cover different borders of shapes, different colors of shapes. We created uh, uh, guides to make sure that we had our, our lines all symmetrical and on 90 degrees and to make sure that our text was all lined up the same. Uh, you know, a whole different lesson on creating different sizes and fonts of text. So we covered a lot in this video. But the good news is that once you have this in place, you can reuse this, you can just move your lines around. You can you know, do all kinds of different things. And it's a really, really great tool to have if you're selling products through e-commerce, whether it's Amazon, eBay, Shopify, whatever the case may be, you know, having a good um, infographic is really, really powerful. And uh, 
I just want to say thank you to everyone for watching this video. Have a good day.